This video is part of a series of 16 presentations by Crystal Witten, Ph.D., based on her book, Country Living. See the video description for availability. The free videos can be found as parts 361 to 376 at www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Earthing, okay? Earthing, anyone can do it. And as we'll see in a few minutes, uh, a very famous cardiologist named uh, Dr. Sinatra, he's a cardiologist on the East Coast. I just learned this morning that he died last year. He's not with us anymore, but he said in one of the books he wrote, one of the greatest discoveries of his time was that of, of earthing, walking barefoot on the ground and what it does for our health. So we're gonna cover some of that. And I think it's really interesting. Um, earthing is 100% free. When you don't feel good, get outside and go barefoot because it can probably help with chronic pain. These are all the things that earthing can help with. So it provides a general sense of peace and calmness, reduce stress, improves your sleep, reduces fatigue. It resets our circadian clock. It reduces jet lag protects the body against electromagnetic fields. Um, it restores hormonal balance. One of the only ways you can raise your uh, T3 thyroid level is, besides taking a pill, is walking on moist ground and, and what we call earthing. So it's really amazing what earthing can do. And it's basically two conductive objects. I'm conductive. The earth is conductive, we come into contact with each other, we exchange electrons. Electrons go from the earth into me. Electrons are just another name for antioxidants. And I'm a nutritionist, and um, most of the time, most of my life, I thought we had to eat food to get antioxidants. It's not true. We can go walking barefoot and get tons of antioxidants and we don't have to worry about calories. And this is why people that work outdoors, when you see people from California who spend a lot of time outdoors, they look very young. They always look healthy and young. They have a certain glow about their skin, and that's because of earthing. Uh, let's talk about how does the earth get its electrons? When there's a thunder and lightning storm, lightning strikes the ground and infuses it with a gazillion electrons. And you can actually see, I live out in the country, and after a thunder and lightning storm, you go to work, you're driving through the country to work and all the cows, instead of standing in the field, they're on the ground. So as much of their body as possible is touching the earth. They're bringing in all those electrons. So cows, animals understand this. They have the sense, the ability to sense that and to take it in. We don't have that ability, or if we did have it, we somehow haven't retained it. So let's just keep going. We are actually disconnected from the earth. So what happens when we take in these electrons from walking on the ground, our voltage drops. Remember we talked yesterday, it drops from plus 200 to minus 200 millivolts. That now means current is flowing. When voltage drops, the current flows. And so that's what happens in our body. And there's a book, uh, it's called The Body Electric by Dr. Robert Becker. I read this book maybe 12 years ago, and I was just kicking myself I had not read it 30 years ago. I mean, if I had read that book very early on in my life, it, it was mind-blowing, just the principles that were in there, healing, how the body heals. The body heals when it has voltage. Voltage is healing. I think that's the name of another book that's out there, and I have it. So for, if you live in a multi-story building, if you go above the second story, you add, you add electrons. I, I'm sorry, you add voltage. You, it's positive voltage. Remember, that's like buying something on credit. Negative voltage is work. It'll do work. It's like having money in your savings account. But positive voltage is, it's now gonna put your body at a disadvantage disease is gonna get entrenched, it's gonna progress. So these people that live in penthouses, you have to think about that. They really, you know, they're really working against um, their body's natural voltage system. So, okay, this is incredible. I hope you can see it. 
But what you see here on the left, these are red blood cells. These are red blood cells that are, um, they're individual, they're free. The, um, they're grounded. These red blood cells are stacked like a bunch of pennies stacked on top of each other. This is called the Rouleau effect. It's a French word that means stacked like pancakes. So before grounding, the blood can look like that. The red blood cells are stacked on top of each other, which means they're not moving through the small little capillaries very well. So after grounding, after 10, 20, 30 minutes of grounding, just grounding, no other intervention, the red blood cells look like that on the right. Isn't that incredible? This is free, people. We have it available to us. And connect this piece right here to a wire that goes outside your window and it's attached to something in the ground, a metal stake that goes about two or three feet into the ground. And then when you're sleeping, you can get those electrons coming into your, this is into the foot of the bed. So the whole sheet's not grounded, it's just one, one section. So that's grounding. I'm not really gonna talk too much about grounding, but I do wanna talk about earthing. The results demonstrate for the first time that even one hour contact with the earth restores the blood flow regulation to our face. So, and I'm gonna show you the next slide. This is using a thermographic camera, okay? A thermographic camera looks for differences in temperature. So before uh, earthing, this is how the face, when you use a thermographic camera to take a picture, it's on the left. When you look at the right, that's after earthing for about an hour, and you start to see blood flowing into the eyes, blood and circulation coming into the face. It can completely change the way your face looks when you've done some, some, um, some earthing. This is another result right here. Uh, earthing reduces inflammation. So you see the inflammation here, you can see the redness right here, and there's some pain there um, on the left leg. But after earthing, you see it's quite different. Um, if your hands are touching the ground, the electrons will come in through the hands or any, so you're conductive, but if you wear plastic shoes or plastic sandals or almost all shoes, they're gonna prevent that from happening. So that's why it needs to be barefoot. But you can buy shoes that will be earthing friendly. And so what they do, they take like a leather type shoe and you can actually get electrons through leather. Um, but if it's a plastic shoe, they put a metal piece that goes from the bottom of the shoe to somewhere on the, the, the bed of the shoe. And you're gonna get, anytime we have a conductive body um, and you come into contact with a conductive, another conductive body, you're gonna transfer electrons. So for example, uh, if you have a brand new baby, does anyone, I saw a lady that had a baby, but I think she had to leave. Babies have a lot of voltage. A brand new baby is like, very high voltage. And so if an older person with lower voltage holds a baby, that baby will transfer what? Some of their voltage into the person with lower voltage. It's actually a great thing. It's not gonna harm the baby. The baby will continue to have high voltage, but you're transferring that in. Um, so be careful who you get naked with, okay? Because you know, they're, if, if they're sick, their voltage is going to be lower. You're going to be transferring your electron. Okay, so what about holding a, a puppy or some kind of energetic pet? So, yes, I say go for it, but I love animals. <laughs> so, um, but let's keep looking at this because this is amazing. For $200, you can buy a thermographic camera. I have one. I've used it for years. I can tell you who has... A neuropathy in their hands and feet by looking at this camera. Um, I can look at your face, I can look at your head, I can look at your torso. We're going to look at some examples here. This is not a very good picture, but it's it's um, showing, look at all the inflammation right here, the orange and red. This is showing inflammation. After 30 minutes of earthing, where does that inflammation go? It's gone. Isn't that incredible? This to me is this information is just so valuable. 
we can use this. This is why country living is amazing because it puts us in a contact with the earth. When you have to get out there and garden and till the ground and do all this other stuff, you're in constant contact with what? Another conductive body. And that conductive body is the earth. And there is a limitless amount of electrons in the earth. There, you're, we're not gonna run out of electrons. So here we see some more inflammation um, in, the, in the torso. And after earthing, we see that inflammation has really come down. It's amazing what happens. Um, and I'm gonna go off on a tangent because I love this stuff. If I was younger, I would become a thermographic technician. But this is just a, a thermography center in Memphis, Tennessee. And we can actually see areas of inflammation or hypo. This is a hypo, this is a cyst right here. It's, you can't really see it very well. It's a round area. It should have some more circulation, but it doesn't. That's a cyst, some kind of cyst. Um, here we have, it looks like part of the small intestine maybe, or maybe it's the large intestine. Um, there's some inflammation going on there. Um, we can tell right here, there's definitely some inflammation in the neck. There's some pain going on there, some hypometabolism going on there. You can see that artery in the leg. There's some inflammation, some plebitis going on there. Um, so what we're looking at in thermography, um, I'm not trained to actually read this for you, but I, I do it unofficially. Um, so, but we look for symmetry. Okay, so if you look at the one on the left, there's a fair amount of symmetry, but it looks like his right elbow has a little bit of inflammation going on, right? And there's some other areas where there's a little, um, it's not completely symmetrical, but you can see on the left, I'm sorry, you can't see, but there's all these different diagnoses that we can actually, we're not gonna use this to necessarily make a diagnosis, but. I'm gonna use this information to tell my client, I'm not sure you should exercise if you have a neuropathy in your feet. What do you think would happen if someone started exercising and they had a severe neuropathy? They're what now? Well, yeah, they may trip and fall and it's gonna hurt. They're gonna have some pain down there. Exercise can be painful um, if you don't have good circulation. And so, I tell people, I take their picture, I send it to their email, and I say, you need to show your doctor this, okay? Let your doctor figure this out. <laughs> I'm gonna give you my opinion, but I'm not a diagnostician. I'm just giving you a direction to go in. So I do use this, and I use it to come up with uh, programs to help people, um, but you don't even have to, um, you can pretty much know. Let's do some more diagnosing here. So this one, Right here, you can see there's a lot. Okay, so with the diagnosis of this person has headaches, yeah, the headache is right there. You can see the area of whiteness. They have a sinus type headache. Um, the carotid artery is activated and you can see some inflammation. You can see some narrowing, some blockage going on there. So now we have this, okay, we gotta go in and maybe do something to the carotid, you know, clean it out. This is, there's no, absolutely no risk that I know of to doing thermography, but yet women go get mammograms. There's a, a risk of x-rays and you gotta have it clamped down and um, not very much fun. Yeah. You can sit on the ground. So, so you don't wanna wear polyester. You wanna wear linen or cotton or wool when you sit on the ground so you can transfer the electrons, it needs to be conductive, but you wanna get on the ground for sure. So you don't have to necessarily walk, um, but let's look up here, um, just a few more. Nerve damage. Okay, so we have some nerve damage there and some, and some hypometabolism there. Do you know which ankle is hurting? The right ankle. Um, let's see, fibromyalgia. You can see these areas of activation lower back pain, you can see that acting up. You can see arthritis, breast cancer. I'm gonna show another slide. There's actually a center in Chattanooga where I live. Okay, here is feet. This is what we call a thermal amputation. We'll get to breast in a minute. But you can see the toes. There's absolutely not very good circulation there. 
okay? I'm not, yeah, so that's a wow. What are we gonna do about it? It, to me, indicates possible B12 deficiency. Oh, really? So, yeah. So I'm gonna say, hey, we need to focus on B12 uh, and see if that can come back. So there are things earthing, just earthing 30, 40, 50 minutes, an hour, can likely impact that positively. I would get outside as much as possible where your feet are touching the moist ground, you're grounding a lot for diabetic. Here's another um, thermography where we're looking at carotid, carotid artery occlusion. This lady is gonna have a stroke. We, we just identified that she could potentially have a stroke. That's not good. So we now know she needs to do X, Y, and Z. She needs to take this information to her doctor and her doctor needs to be dealing with her on that issue. So it's very important. This guy right here, <laughs> okay. So, you know, here's an area of hypo metabolism and then we see an area right here. This guy has a sore neck, I'm telling you for sure. Um, <clears throat> so, so 90 days after a tumor starts and there's two cancer cells, you can detect um, very early on with thermography you can begin to detect changes in breast tissue. Whereas uh, mammography detection is gonna be at this level, 268,435,456 cancer cells. So thermography very, if you have, if breast cancer runs in your family, there's no risk, there's no x-ray, there's no no risk to thermography. So I do recommend that people, um, you know, if I was younger, I see a couple of young people here, become a thermographic technician. This to me is where, this is the future of medicine. I really believe we're going in this direction using thermography. Down here you can see, this is something called, this is neuropathy in the right hand. So you can see there's circulation here there's actually some hypercirculation there, some hot and some heat there. Um, but over here on the right hand, she has a thermal amputation. So very, uh, this is a problem. Um, so again, it gives your physician, I'm not an MD, I have a PhD. I use this all the time, not to diagnose, but to send someone to their doctor to get more information. Like where I live in Chattanooga, there's a breast thermography institute. So I think you would just, maybe that area, the doctors would know about it, the OBs or whoever's doing the exams, they'd know about it and be able to refer you. Or you might just be able to make an appointment yourself, just call them up and say, I'd like to come in. And let me tell you, it's not a bad idea, even when you're young, because there's no risk, there's no x-rays or anything. Get a baseline, get a baseline thermography exam, and you could do it every year, every other year, something like that. Where'd you get that done? They have, there are centers probably in big cities that do this. Um, I would go, if you're in the Vancouver area, look for Vancouver and thermography clinics and see what comes up. And we gotta be living in the country now. That's right. <laughs> this means you when you go to Costco in the big city, <laughs> You make your appointment with the Thermography Institute. <laughs> Thanks, Calvin. And you know what? He's going to the country in New Zealand in a few weeks, so lucky him. Is it, is it a specific device that takes the thermal pictures? Because my parents are actually volunteer first responders on a department, and they oh. have the department that they're a part of has for fire fighting reasons. Excellent. They, yeah. They have a thermal camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. You can you can diagnose compartment syndrome. You can you can find. Um, so it's really interesting. You never use a thermograph without more information about the person. So if they just had a terrible accident, you're going to be looking for where you know possibly there might be a an artery that's severed or something like that. Um, but certainly, if you're not using it in acute settings, you can use it to kind of, again, it's based on what you tell me about your situation and what I see on there. I'm looking for symmetry. I'm looking for hypometabolic areas. I'm looking for hypermetabolic areas. I'm looking for narrow arteries. 
I'm looking for thermographic amputations, which tend to happen in your hands and feet. Um, but they can actually be compartmentalized. You can have areas of hypo, like you could probably see an area of the gut that might be quote dead. You could probably see that on a thermographic camera. I'm not saying you could, but I'm betting you probably could. But to me, this is very, this is something that everyone has for $200. You can buy a cheap thermographic camera that you can buy it at Lowe's or Home Depot. And it's just a, it's a, it's a, you know, construction people use it. Um, I love mine. I, you can save the pictures and send them to people. So they have that information. You put it in their file, you can put an electronic file. So lots of information about a client that you would have no other way of necessarily getting. And keep in mind, the good news is that even when we have these pathological changes in our body, what can treat that? What can actually change it in the matter of 60 minutes? Earthing, walking barefoot on the ground can improve many of these conditions within 60 minutes improved. Let's go back and look at those because I find this to be just so remarkable. So here we are. So right here, just 30 minutes earthing and this lady is now getting some circulation into her face. Do, do you think her face is gonna look better after doing that? You bet it is. It's gonna look a lot better. The tension's gonna drain out of it. It's gonna look better. So that's, that's uh, when this is another earthing one. Before, you see the redness. Uh, I think it's 30 or 60 minutes after just one session of earthing, a lot of that is gone. You see the right, the left leg. There is some redness and inflammation on the left side, the lateral. After earthing, gone. So very exciting stuff. Another earthing grounding. This is 30 minutes of earthing. So all the inflammation in the leg disappears when you get enough electrons in there. Yes, it does. It must be cotton, linen, or wool, or any natural fiber. It cannot be rayon, polyester. What are some of the other ones? You can walk with wool socks. And interestingly enough, these fibers have an amazing vibration frequency. But if you have a blend of, say, wool and polyester, it completely negates the good frequency that's in these natural fibers. I think wool is the highest. Maybe it's linen, linen or wool. And you know, linen is mentioned a lot in the Bible. You know, the priests wore linen robes. Yeah, not to mix the fibers, that's right. We're not supposed to mix the fibers. Yes. Pardon me? Oh, silk is great too. Silk is good. Um, from what I've read, I think the best is dirt. So grass, well like, okay, so grass is amazing. So a beautiful grass on top of moist earth is gold, absolute gold. <laughs> to be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end-time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.